Welcome to our lecture online and here we're going to show you that Newton's method works no matter where you start your first point. For example, let's say that you have a function that goes through the x-axis num numerous times, so there's, there's many uh, roots so to speak, and let's say that finally the function drops down below the x-axis and you pick your first point in such a way that when you evaluate your function at your first point, you're below the x-axis. Does the Newton's method still work this way? And we'll show you that it does. Remember from the last uh, video that we can iteratively find subsequent points closer and closer and closer to the root by using this equation right here. That your new point is equal to the old point minus the ratio of the function evaluated at your first guess point divided by the derivative of the function evaluated at the first guess point. And we showed you that that works when the point that you choose causes you to be above the x-axis when you evaluate the function. But does it work here? Let's find out. Well, first of all, what we're going to do here is uh, determine that if we pick our first point x sub 1 here and we evaluate the function at x sub 1, and of course this is f sub x, that's the function that we're dealing with, then we end up with a point down here, and so the value we get here will be a negative value. So whatever the number is, it will give you negative something. All right. Then if you find the derivative of that, so you have f prime of x, and then you evaluate the derivative, f prime of x is equal to your first guess point, you will get a slope. And the slope, of course, at that point will be equal to the slope right here. There it is, slope right there. And notice if you follow that, a line that is, has that slope that goes to that point, you end up at a new point right there. And this should be then your second point, x sub 2. And the, dif the distance between the two points, let's call that delta x. And I will show you that Newton's method does indeed allow you to find the second point, which means you're now closer to the root than you were before. And I'll show you how that continues on. All right, so first of all, let's define the slope. The slope, by definition, is equal to the rise divided by the run. And if we look at this, if we want to figure out the slope here, and we have a triangle right here, so going from this point to this point, you can see that the slope is negative, and of course the rise is actually a drop. When we go from left to right, from x2 to x1, we see that there is actually a drop. And the drop then will be equal to the function evaluated x sub 1, which will give us a negative number. So this is the function where x is evaluated at x sub 1, and of course the run is, uh, well, the run will be the delta x right here, the delta x. And so it will be the ratio of those two. That will be the slope. Notice delta x is a positive value. It's a distance from x sub 2 to x sub 1 when you go from left to right. And the function here, evaluate x sub 1, will give you a negative number. And of course, a negative number divided by a positive number will give you a negative slope. So, so far, the signs seem to work out. Now, solving that equation for delta x, we can say that delta x is equal to the function evaluated at x sub 1 divided by the slope of the line that goes through the function that we just evaluated. And notice that the slope of the function at that point is actually the derivative evaluated at that point. So we can write that delta x is equal to the function evaluated at our first guess point divided by the derivative of the function evaluated at our first guess point right there. Now, <clears throat> notice that this will give us a negative value because it gives a point below the axis. This will give us a negative value because it's a slope and it's a negative slope. And you see that a negative value divided by a negative value will give us a positive delta x. It's a positive number. So now when we look at this equation right here, if we find that x sub 2 is therefore equal to x sub 1, which is our first guess point, minus f evaluated, the function evaluated x sub 1 divided by the derivative evaluated x sub 1, which is equal to this thing right here, which is equal to the delta x. So it's simply x1 minus delta x, which brings you to this next point. So you can see that it doesn't matter if the point evaluated of your function will, give you will get you above the x-axis or below the x-axis. The function works just as well, and Newton's method works just as well. So what happens now? Well, now you found the second point closer to your uh, root. You would do the same thing again. You'd say, okay, therefore, and I'll use a different color, x sub 3 is equal to x sub 2 minus the function evaluated at x sub 2 divided by the derivative of the function evaluated at x sub 2 because what happens is the function evaluated at x sub 2 will give you this point right there. 
the, the slope at that point will look kind of like this. And notice that this will give you a new point, x sub 3, which is, again, much, much closer to the root as before. And then you do it again. And if you keep doing that again, eventually you'll get closer and closer and closer to the actual root of the function. So you can see here that it doesn't matter if you pick a point at random, to the left, to the right of your function, you will always zero in using Newton's method to the root that's nearest to your point. And that's how that works.